Hey, what's up guys? So let's take a look at some of the coolest and most interesting tech on display this year at CES 2025. Now, I don't normally go to CES because when it comes to countermeasures like radar detectors and dash cams, there's actually way more stuff on display at SEMA. However, I wound up getting sick right before SEMA this year, and so I wound up going to CES instead. Additionally, 70 My, the dash cam company, reached out to me because they really wanted to sit down and talk about their line of dash cams. And a special thank you to them uh, for flying me out to the event. Now, if you guys know, I don't typically recommend 70 My dash cams. There's actually none of their products that I'm a big fan of. And for that reason, they wanted to sit down and kind of go over their existing lineup to get some feedback uh, as far as their existing dash cams, as well as their new dash cams that they're going to be releasing in the future. And so for that reason, I met up with them and we talked about their line of dash cams, and they seem to be really open and receptive to feedback. As far as what they're going to do in the future. Obviously, I have no idea. That remains to be seen. And I went over a lot of this detail uh, in the previous video going over all of the different dash cam companies uh, over at CES. Now, when it comes to countermeasures, though, there really wasn't anything noteworthy. Escort was actually the only company that had something set up there, but it was actually like a private room in a different hotel, really just designed for like private conversations with a lot of their uh, salespeople and distributors and whatnot. Uh, Uniden had some reps at the show as well, but no booth and nothing on display. They were really just there to meet with people and have discussions there too. When it comes to dash cam companies, there were actually more of those there than I expected. And again, I covered those in the previous video going over all the different dash cams. Uh, but when it comes to all the other non-countermeasure stuff, there was so much cool stuff there. For example, Honda had some really cool futuristic looking cars called the Zero Series, including both a sedan as well as an SUV. And it was kind of fun to watch some of the doors actually remotely open and close. Zooks had this really wild looking van that had a bunch of cameras up on top. And there was also another van on display there by Dongyu Fine Chem uh, that had these windows with LEDs that could display a bunch of useful information to people outside the vans. Plus, because these LEDs were on the windows instead of on opaque walls, they would still allow the passengers inside the van to see out of the van somewhat. Similarly, there were also these see-through OLED TVs that could display stuff on screen like normal, but otherwise they were actually transparent, a lot like a window. And then when it comes to flying vehicles, they had these personal helicopters that could actually be folded up uh, and put inside of a van for transport. And then there was also this company called InvoStation, which had these personal transport vehicles that basically looked like UFOs. They had these artist renderings on TV showing them flying around a city uh, and showing what it looks like when you've got a bunch of these. They didn't have any of their UFOs on display or anything. It was just what they were showing on TV. Now, over on the website, they had a number of different versions for Earth and the Moon and Mars. And interestingly, they're actually taking pre-orders right now and saying they're going to start shipping by 2030. Obviously, I have no idea if any of that's true, but again, it was just something kind of unique and interesting at the show. Now, something else on display that was a little more concrete. You know how we have folding phones nowadays? Well, they actually had these foldable and curved displays for the dash of your car, uh, where they could actually follow the curvature of the car, or they could actually fold up and tuck away once they're no longer needed either. And then on the radar and laser side, there were a bunch of different companies there who would show off their different tech for monitoring different vehicles around them, typically on the self-driving front. There was also this dash cam that I stumbled across that's designed to be installed on a bus uh, and has AI built in. And the AI would allow for monitoring of things like other drivers who change lanes into bus lanes or run red lights or park illegally. Uh, it would also help the city find things that need to be repaired, such as open manhole covers or faded road markings that need to be repainted as well as damaged roads that need to be repaved. And then it had a lot of the usual driver monitoring stuff, like seeing if drivers are kind of tired or falling asleep or using their cell phone while driving. And there's also another company that I found that's using open source AI software for the cameras, and it was really interesting to see what they're capable of. For example, they could pick out individual faces, they can recognize details such as the person's sex or their age, and they can even continually track people over time. Like you can see the IDs here for both of the runners that are actually staying constant as they're running down the road. And then shifting gears when it comes to robots, there were a lot of different robots there as well. For example, they had some robots that are designed to help kids with neurological disorders learn how to walk, which I thought was actually a really cool idea. Then they had some traditional robots walking around the show and passing out swag. There were several companies with robotic dogs walking around. There were also some robotic toy pets that you could actually play with. There were people showing off different ways to use these robots. One of my favorites were some that had cameras and could actually mimic your hand gestures in real time. Some of the robots were designed to drive around and help on construction sites, while others could actually drive around and help to mow your lawn. And one of my favorite robots was actually like a Roomba that had this robotic arm that could pop out to help pick up kids' toys 
or socks or anything else that could traditionally get a robotic vacuum stuck. And then it can take those items and put them away back where they belong. This vacuum is produced by Roborock, and unlike a lot of the other tech on display, which just kind of demonstrates futuristic technology that may or may not come to pass, it looks like this vacuum is actually gonna be released later this year. So that was actually pretty cool to see, especially as somebody who has kids and winds up having a lot of stuff around the house and has to spend a lot of time kind of like vacuum proofing the house before the vacuums actually get started to do their thing. And I'll put some information about this vacuum as well as a lot of the other stuff that I'm talking about here uh, in this video down in the video description for you. Next, I saw a number of companies that are working on real-time translation devices for you. So maybe somebody's speaking one language and you can actually see or hear what they're saying in a different language. Now this was particularly interesting to me because I had just gotten back from Colombia over the holidays uh, to visit family and my Spanish is by no means perfect yet. And I found two different implementations of different uh, kind of automatic translation devices. Some of them use glasses and others were actually earpieces. Now up to this point as needed, I've been using apps like Google Translate that helps me to translate between different languages or helps me to even have conversations where I speak one language and then it speaks in a different language and can go back and forth, which has been very helpful. Uh, but again, not everybody wants to have a phone in the middle. Now, when it comes to the different translating glasses there, the idea is when somebody would actually speak in a different language, you would actually see text displayed on screen in a different language in real time. Now, in practice, I wasn't actually a huge fan of this because of the fact that, well, I'm looking at a person, but to see the text, I'm usually having to look down. And so if I want to actually see the text and maintain eye contact, I have to kind of like do this, which feels a little bit awkward. Uh, and so I actually wound up preferring some of the ones that go in the ear so that I could maintain eye contact while talking to people, but just hear what's being said in a different language in real time. Now, you would usually still have to have some kind of box in the middle that was doing a lot of the translation and whatnot. But the idea is if you wanted to have a conversation with somebody, you could both put in earpieces. You would then select which languages you wanted to listen to, what you're going to hear, and then you just be able to have a conversation back and forth. So for conversations with some initial setup, I preferred the earpiece application, but uh, the glasses would be nice to, well, you can just kind of like walk around and when somebody's speaking, you could just see the text on screen. It would also be kind of nice if like maybe uh, even in your native language, if you had hearing issues, you could just see subtitles, <laughs> right? For uh, what's being said in your native language. If you're watching movies, whatever language it's in, you can see the text on screen or even things like if you're gonna be giving a presentation, maybe you could just have notes displayed right on the glasses. So kind of cool ideas for these information displays, whether it's visual or audible, uh, for language translation or whatever else. Now, some of this tech though was honestly pretty buggy and not all of it actually even worked properly. A lot of the stuff that's on the display for the show, it could be like pretty beta versions of software. It feels like alpha sometimes. Sometimes because the internet is pretty bad in there, even with Wi-Fi, some of the stuff that requires internet connectivity just has issues. And so again, a lot of the stuff that we see there is like things that they're working on that may or may not actually be ready for prime time. Sometimes it's companies that are just playing around with ideas to get an idea of user feedback to see if it's even something that people like that they would want to continue developing and ultimately re release at some point. So who knows what kind of stuff like this is actually going to be released. But again, it was really cool to see companies just playing and experimenting with different ideas like this. Now, one of the biggest trends of the show this year by far was AI. It felt like AI was in anything and everything. It would be in individual devices. It would sometimes be in entire rooms. There were digital wall paintings made of AI generated art. There were AI stethoscopes that could listen to your heart and help give you a better idea as far as what's going on inside your body. There were even entire machines that you could stand on and it would scan your body to give you bodily stats and even look for diseases and different issues inside your body. There was also even an AI barbecue grill that was basically like a grill hooked up to ChatGPT where you could talk to it and ask for recipe ideas, say maybe like I've got a chicken or a steak or whatever, and it could tell you how to cook it. Uh, what ingredients to add, what temperatures to do, how long to cook it for, etc. And then once you were ready, it could start to actually control the grill for you and get everything set up. It could notify you when it was time to like maybe turn the meat or something. And then if you are busy and you're not actually doing that, it could maybe turn down the heat to avoid burning your meat for you. So basically more automation and control integrating AI into everything. Additionally, Canon was there and they released two new Bitcoin miners that also double as room heaters. The smaller one that they released is the Avalon Nano 3S, which is kind of like a personal little heater. I actually have their previous version, the Nano 3, on my desk, and it's nice to help heat up my fingers and whatnot while I'm sitting in front of the computer. They also released a second Bitcoin miner called the Mini 3, which is a much larger heater, and this one's designed to actually heat up an entire room. Now, with both of these miners, the idea is you're going to be earning some Bitcoin, which you can use to offset the price of the electricity that you're using to heat your room in the first place, 
Plus, you're also helping to decentralize Bitcoin mining as well, which is a big help considering, well, a lot of the centralization that's been going on on the Bitcoin mining side. And I've actually got a dedicated video going over these two miners over on my second YouTube channel that's dedicated to Bitcoin and Bitcoin mining. You can check out that full video if you like, and I'll link to it down in the video description. And then finally, because it's CES, well, you just see cool, interesting stuff everywhere you go. It really is a fun show to walk around and explore. It's a massive show and it's impossible to see everything. And so if you watch a lot of these kind of like CES recap videos, you're gonna wind up seeing different things covered by different people based on their interests as well as also just the things that they found. There's just so much stuff there. But either way, it was a great show. Really happy that I went and uh, had a chance to, you know, see a lot of the dash cam manufacturers, again, which I've covered in the previous video. But this is a look as far as just maybe a lot of the other kind of interesting and cool and unique and random stuff that was on display at the show as well. And with that said, I'm glad to be done with all of the CES stuff because honestly, I have so much stuff to start catching back up on as far as uh, I know new stuff, updates, as well as all the things that are going to be coming out here later this year in 2025. So it's definitely going to be a busy year. And so with that said, subscribe if you haven't done so already to stay up to date to uh, all the new stuff that's going to be coming out. And uh, yeah, definitely time for me to get back into it. Thanks so much for watching. I'm really glad to be back and I'll see you guys in the next one.